ready? Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good this evening. Shout out to all my AT aliens out there. A lot of people in Atlanta have been hitting me up, wanting me to talk about the whole Felicia Moore, T.I., Isaac Hayes III drama, okay? So if you guys do not know, I had been covering this case earlier in the year when all the allegations came out against T.I., and I was hinting in the video that I felt like the reason why these allegations were being pushed the way they were, not saying he's innocent, not saying he's guilty, bitch. I'm not a judge. I don't wear a robe, okay? But what I'm saying is that I felt like the reason why all of a sudden this was coming out was because Sabrina Peterson was team Felicia Moore. And as we know, Miss Felicia Moore was running for, for mayor of Atlanta, and so this was a very, very interesting race. A lot of people had conspiracies. A lot of people tied the whole T.I. sexual allegation drama to the political affairs of Felicia Moore. Well, it was announced yesterday, okay, that basically she lost the race to Andre Dickens. Andre Dickens is now the mayor of Atlanta. And from what a lot of people are telling me, my friends and, you know, peoples in Atlanta, they really rock with Andre Dickens. Um, he was more for the people. Felicia is more conservative, and it seems like she was more concerned with the rich folks, you know, the the, the buck aliens, whatever you call people from Buckhead. I don't know because I don't live down there. But <laughs> it seems like she was more interested in those constituents than the other constituents. But instead of her looking in the mirror and saying, well, what can I do better? You know, what else can I run for? in the future you just look right in here uh -huh. look in there and you see that you're doing too much how can I make myself, you know, more accessible to the people where they feel comfortable voting for me? Um, she went on a whole tirade this morning, basically blaming Isaac Hayes III and T.I. for her loss. She says that Isaac Hayes III is obsessed with her, honey. He won't keep her name out of his mouth, that they're spreading rumors and lies. Honey, Felicia Moore was not here for the bullshit. Y'all go ahead and check out this video, honey. She was definitely in her feelings after that loss. Now, this Isaac Hayes, which somehow has some of obsession with me uh, and now T.I., both of them uh, went after me about that when I started to run for mayor. They went after me about it, Isaac, before, but then they, they can't surface back up. And this was a few months ago. And they lied then, saying that I was saying I wanted to close all recording studios. The legislation would have never closed anything. Uh, it would only be for new ones. And T.I., puts out a very salacious lie, just point blank lie and misinformation saying that I wanted to close strip clubs. I've never even discussed strip clubs since the general election. That's never come up in any of the election things, but they put that out there because they have a large following. It went viral uh, and it took a while for, some, for people to start to get the message that I never said I wanted to close that. Then they just made up stuff. And it's just sad that, you know, good people try to run to serve because they have a heart for the people in the city and they get torn down by misinformation and used by celebrities um, and their influence and social media reach uh, to slander uh, someone's name and lie. It's ongoing stream of lies and information by um, Isaac Hayes III in particular, I think he has some obsession with tearing me down. I feel sorry for the karma he will receive in life. And uh, Mr. T.I., who I would have thought should have learned his lesson from jumping on me when I was running earlier, because that it got him in a fight with someone else that opened up the whole series of allegations that he has in front of him. So he should learn to stay out of politics. Isaac Hayes and T.I., they both decided to speak out. Um, T.I. went on a long 13-minute rant, honey. Isaac Hayes took to his social media page to, to basically blast her and call her out for accusing them of ruining, you know, her race. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys the clips. They also went on to V103 this morning as well to speak on the situation further. So I'm going to play you a little bit of everything. So y'all go ahead and check this out. Welcome back to Start Your Day. In just about 15 minutes, the polls open in Atlanta to choose the city's next mayor. The runoff 
is between City Council President Felicia Moore and Councilman Andre Dickens. The latest Atlanta Journal-Constitution poll shows Dickens leading more nearly 43 to 37 percent with 20 percent of voters still reportedly undecided and in true Atlanta fashion rapper T.I. is now involved slamming Felicia Moore on Instagram uh, T.I. says he's seen a report that if elected she is promising to shut down all strip clubs in the city well, um, Ms. Moore shut down the accusations last night on Prime with Charles Blow. Listen. Well, first of all, it's a lie. I, I haven't even mentioned strip clubs in this whole race since I've been in it when I challenged the current mayor back in January. Today was the only day I talked about strip clubs. I have, there were other rumors. There've been so many rumors. If I say yes, they said I said no. If I said no, they say I'm saying yes. And again, these are targeted attacks and lies that are being spread to separate me from black people. Uh, it's a desperation move because they know at the end of the day, uh, this is a strong campaign and we're going to win this race. It is totally false. No one ever interviewed me. No one ever asked me before they printed anything. I'm not sure who started it, but T.I. needs to stop it because he hasn't even asked me. Uh, and why he's promoting this is because he's supporting the other candidates. And Miss Felicia Moore saying that, uh, <laughs> that me... And Isaac Hayes the third cost her the election due to misinformation. Right? Um, first thing, how can she totally negate all like everything that happened outside of okay if if you're saying you didn't really plan to shut down the strip clubs. Whatever. That's old news, ma'am. It's over. It's over. It's over with, man. Um, whether you want to shut down strip clubs, studios, hookah bars, whatever it is, ma'am. What you did was you lost sight of one thing. This culture, the creatives in this city, we run this town. We do. And we need someone in the, and the citizens of a city make the decisions of who should lead that city. All right. Um, now. I got a chance to watch the video. And another thing that I, that was interesting. Hmm. Another thing that was interesting was she say uh, that celebrities shouldn't even be involved in politics. You don't understand. You did. We run this town. All of the business that comes to this city, all of the people who decide to move to this city, the tourism dollars, all of that comes from our culture. We were here first. Anyone who doesn't acknowledge that or who, who can't hold that in high regard is not fit to sit in the seat of the mayor of Atlanta. Now, I wish her the best and I hope she finds a position that she's better suited for. But it was not this. It simply was not. You were out of touch. You do not understand. You can't come into a city that was built by a, a host of creatives and, 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 and say that, you know, and expect to run that city and don't think that these creatives will get involved. Ma'am. Ma'am. You're intelligent. 
enough to know better than that, ma'am. I just, uh, another thing that was interesting, another thing that was interesting about her video that's on TMZ.com. You can go get it. It ain't, you know, it ain't nothing. It ain't nothing that uh, I'm making up just to make sure that my facts are correct this time. Um, at the end of your video, what you said was, T.I. should have learned his lesson about interfering in politics because earlier this year, he said something about me and my plans to, I'm going to say shut the studio down because that's what I see it as, to shut the studio down. After I, after I posted that, uh, he got into a back and forth with someone else. And that's what caused all of his allegations that he's facing. Now, you see, I always had, I knew that all that bullshit happened because y'all didn't want me to be involved in this particular election. And it almost worked because after it was over with, I said I was done, bro. I said, man, I'm done. I ain't want to do it. I ain't even want to get involved. You know what I mean? And if you notice, I didn't get involved until the very end. But, ma'am, exactly what were fake, false allegations supposed to teach me, ma'am? Hmm. When y'all lied on me, I didn't call TMZ and go crying about it. I rolled my I rolled my ride out. I took mine. I carried my weight. Cause that's what I do. Yeah, you know I mean, I didn't go nowhere and say, "Look at what they doing to me." Come on, bro. But I just want y'all to see that because I knew I knew I just I wasn't armed with the information that I needed. But I'm going to tell you something. When I made that post, I reposted what Isaac Hayes posted about her, the legislation that would have issued, made people get permits to have studios. I posted that and I, with a message in my caption that says, um, the creatives run this town and you got to consider us and you need to respect that we run this town. After I posted that message, after I made that post, the very next day, that woman who is a clear supporter of Felicia Moore all through the campaign, even before the she announced that she was running, clear supporter of Felicia Moore. That's when she came out the very next day with all that bullshit. And if Felicia Moore had nothing to do with it. How would she know about it? If she had nothing to do with it, if it wasn't on her radar, why would she mention it in her own video? So now she is she suggesting, oh, we're going to we're going to do it again. So if 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 any. At the blue allegations just happen to come up now. So this is I mean. I'm a chess player, ma'am. I'm a chess player, ma'am. I, I, I ain't, uh, I'm not into, you know, just talking for no reason. I, I ain't into that. I think, um, what would have been the gracious what would have been the thing to do of integrity was to get on there and congratulate Andre Dickens on a well-ran campaign because he really was, he, he, he got out there and got to the people more than you. He dealt with and addressed the concerns of the people in the streets. He knocked on doors. You you did not show up to the only debate that was in Southwest Atlanta. 
which showed that you only care about the north side of town. You think people are so dumb and blind that they can't see through this rhetoric? It's easy to just say it was because of the strip club. That's easy. But what about the fact that you served on city council for 24 years and not one of your fellow council members supported you? Not one, bro. In 24 years? Mm. So, but I do, I do wish the best for her, you know, Uh, and I hope she finds a, a position somewhere that she's better suited for. But this ain't it. Um. But I just really found the end of that video very, very interesting. TMZ, Felicia Moore, who was the competitor, mm-hmm. has come out and she is accusing two people mm-hmm. of spreading lies about her and her proposed policies. She says that these lies, alleged lies, mm-hmm. have helped tip the scales in the final days of the election. Wow. And now she's calling them out over it and she feels like you should call them out over it, too. So basically, she's saying that these two people caused her to lose the election. That is basically to be the 61st what she's saying. Mayor of Atlanta. That is basically what she's saying. That's a bold statement. One of the two people, people, two people. One of them being Ti. Mm-hmm. The other one sitting in front of us right now, mm-hmm. being Isaac Hayes the third. Wow. Isaac. Yeah. First of all, thank you for joining us on short, short, short notice. Oh, good morning. I have time today. I, I, and I <laughs> he love has it. Time and today. I love it. I have now, time today. Before you weigh in, I want you to hear. What Felicia Moore said. Let's go. Listen. Now, this Isaac Hayes, which somehow has some obsession with me, uh, and now T.I., both of them uh, went after me about that when I started to run for mayor. They went after me about it, Isaac, before, but then they, they can't surface back up. And this was a few months ago. And they lied then, saying that I was saying I wanted to close all res- recording studios the legislation would have never closed anything it would only be for new ones and ti puts out a very salacious lie just point blank lie and misinformation saying that i wanted to close strip clubs i've never even discussed strip clubs since the general election that's never come up in any of the election things but they put that out there because they have a large following it went viral uh, and it took a while for some, for people to start to get the message that I never said I wanted to close that. Then they just made up stuff. It's ongoing stream of lies and information by Isaac Hayes the third in particular. I think he has some obsession with tearing me down. I feel sorry for the karma he will receive in life. And Mr. T.I., who I would have thought should have learned his lesson from jumping on me when I was running earlier, because it got him in a fight with someone else that opened up the whole series of allegations that he has in front of him. So he should learn to stay out of politics. She said that you have an obsession with her. Definitely not. Are you obsessed with Felicia Moore? Absolutely not. No. Okay. Unwrap this. What? First of all, (laughs) let's say this. If, if two people, (laughs) if, if two men can actually prevent one candidate from winning an election, an entire election, then I mean that's 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 a that's a big deal. Yeah, very big. And deal. and if she can't face the criticism of two individuals that cause her to lose an election, then you ain't built for the job. Mm. You're not built for the job. So how did all of this come about? What what is the reason? Why did you get behind this whole thing to kind of say Felicia Moore is not it? Okay, so the the Atlanta entertainment community has had success in the music industry for 30 years, 40 years in the city of Atlanta. I mean, right. 30 years at least, right? So this recording studio, let's talk about this this issue with recording studios. Yeah, let's do that first. She was the only city council member to, pr- to produce legislation that would have uh, prevented new studios from opening, right? Wow. But it, it could potentially force the closure of other studios in the city of Atlanta that violated whatever the terms were uh, if the legislation was passed. Okay. Now, mind you, I went down to City Hall. This is January of 2017. Okay. Along with the head of the Grammys, Naris in Atlanta, okay. right? The, the Atlanta chapter. Mm-hmm. T. 
Tammy Hurt, uh, platinum producer, platinum uh, 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 Grammy Award winning producer, Tricky Stewart. Okay. The entire music community came down to City Hall. If this wasn't a big deal, why would we all go down to City Hall? Mala Sharma, Tammy Hurt, who's now one of the, on, on the governor's board of the Grammys, why would we go down to City Hall if it wasn't a big deal? Yeah. Secondly, when you have an issue with the recording studio in a community that's existed primarily before a lot of the residents got there, these studios have been here 20, 30 years. Ago. Right. Yeah. Right. So so you don't collude with the community against the businesses that have been there before some of these residents got there. Yeah. You bring both sides to the table and try to negotiate some sort of resolution to that. Secondly, she's lying because in her own words, she said, we want you to shut the business down. She said she didn't have the ability to shut the business down. But the only way to remove the use of that of that studio mm-hmm. so removing the use of a studio is through legislation right so that that's not new recording studios yeah. that means if you want that you if you want to remove this pre-existing studio then we have to pass this legislation and if they violate any of the rules then we can force them to close okay wow. so she's lying that's okay a lie. okay wow. So okay. from from there, that's when you just decided, you know what, I'm not with Felicia Moore, and I'm going to do everything in my power. Because, you know, we hear oftentimes, especially on social media, there's been a lot of, you know, a lot of people saying that the black man is supposed to protect a black woman. Absolutely. And it seems as if you have been coming for Felicia Moore ever since she decided to run for mayor of Atlanta. Right. Do you believe that you're being disrespectful, or do you believe that you're just... I mean, no, I don't. I definitely don't believe I'm being disrespectful. And as a political candidate, you have to face criticism from all sides. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of mudslinging, a lot of I don't even want to we're going to get into that in a second. Yeah. There's a lot of dirty politics that go on in in political campaigns. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, again, how can you if two people can say something about you and feel you feel like you're forced to lose an entire election, then you're not built for the job, man. Okay, this is this is going to become some super huge news, first of all. Yeah. And these are super huge allegations. Absolutely. So let's continue to talk about it. We were talking about the recording studio part of it mm-hmm. earlier. But she's also saying that there was some stuff posted uh, from you guys saying that if she was elected, that she would close the strip clubs. Now, who right. posted that? I don't listen. I don't know who posted that. And, and as a matter of fact, I made a video that said I didn't want to talk about that. Right. Okay. And we can talk about it. But I, I want to say this first and foremost. And I want I want to get factual real quick. Sure. Number one, Felicia Moore lost in early voting. Sixty five. Thirty five. To Andre Dickens. So mm-hmm. before any of the strip club stuff already came out, okay. the voters had decided, right? And what's more problematic is there were three separate instances in this election where Felicia Moore had the opportunity to defend black men, mm. black women, and black lives, and she chose to uh, appeal to her base mm. rather than stand up. There mm. was an ad that darkened Andre Dickens' skin, right? Oh, I saw that. When, when they asked her about it, she said if the ad was in poor taste and the news said that Andre that, that, that Andre Dickens skin was darkened when they asked her about it she goes his skin didn't appear darkened to me that's mm. one two the Kyle Rittenhouse verdict came out and yeah. she made what looked like a very heartfelt post mm-hmm. sincere post about she was didn't agree with the verdict right okay. okay and then her supporters got on her page and called her dummy stupid we thought you were with us we're not voting for you and she took the post down mm-hmm. that's the second time that people mm. that are controlling your decision making right, right are forcing you to do different uh, act differently than you should thirdly there was a trump supporter racist bigot that smeared every single mayor mm-hmm. that was ever in atlanta and said that they were all out for uh money and they were corrupt, including Maynard Jackson and Andrew Young. Yeah. Felicia Moore stood next to this man, smiled, and took his endorsement. Wow. And then once the video started getting traction, she pulled the video down. And again, she talking about she was unaware of the ad. She she denounced the person, but didn't denounce the ad. Wow. So those are three character issues that existed, and people chose in early voting not to vote for her way before strip club issues came up. So she had already lost the election right. in early voting. So I want to hear about that. <laughs> now, when it comes to the strip club situation, again, people are out here trying to defend their businesses right and in politics people are going to listen politics and campaigning is different than winning and, and then governing yeah. right you 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 do what you got to do to win an election now at the end of the day if people decide and th- that run with, fa- with false information or innuendo or whatever she still has a track record of going against the artistic community the recording studios the nightlife community so i don't know where the post came from when i saw it i thought it was funny right and i thought it was hilarious right. but again to it to attack people and say that that's why you lost. You lost because the voters of Atlanta chose Andre Dickens over you way before any of this came out.
came out mm-hmm. and you and it's sour grapes. But it's problematic because you're talking about myself. I'm a business owner in the city of Atlanta. T.I. is a product of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Right. So you're telling at the end of the, the video, she's telling celebrities to stay out of politics. I would hope that what other city do you know that people like Killer Mike, T.I., Little baby, gonna inject themselves into the community and, and, and encourage people to vote and use their voices. So she's saying, number one, celebrities need to stay out of politics. You had your own celebrities. I'm not gonna say who they were. Yeah. Right. But you had your own celebrities. So your celebrities didn't work for you, <laughs> but uh, the people that support Andre Dickens that were celebrities work for them. And they're not celebrities, they're citizens. They're, 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 right. They live, in, right. the they live in the city of Atlanta. Yeah. They come from the city of Atlanta. So that's problematic in itself that you're telling celebrities to stay out of politics when you would hope that any person that's a citizen of the city of Atlanta uses their voice yeah. to tell Absolutely. people to get out and vote, especially in a city like Atlanta. Yeah, because there's no other city that has, you know, celebrities doing that. No, they're not people that inject them, like, the, like, commu- like young kids, like yeah. Gunna and Lil Baby that are telling the community to get out. Yeah. Jeezy and T.I. have buses out there yes, taking, people, taking to people to vote. vote. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. It, where, tell me where you see another city where people are doing that. And yeah. Felicia Moore's like, don't do that. No, nah, if they was doing it for you, you would have you thought it was cool. You would have been with it. I want to hear that. You lost. Take the L, man. Mm. Just take the L. It's the emotion behind it, right? So, like, you have to understand that people that are, especially in Atlanta, we care about Atlanta's progress. So, if you talk about celebrities shouldn't do this, that, and the third, well, listen, the influence, as long as it's used for positivity, yeah. is a good thing. Right. So, that's the part that has me a little bit weirded out about it. You know what I mean? Now, granted, I'm not in her head. I'm not in anybody's head. I can't necessarily, you know, understand or, or decipher what she was trying to really say, but I feel like that was kind of a, a distasteful statement to make because yeah. you can't, you cannot... Uh, condescend somebody's influence and their emotion towards what they want to see as progression for where they live. Yeah. Yes. And what it seems is if there's a huge disconnect between the, the arts community and politics and just trying to figure out like, yo, what's really going, what is the real problem? Yeah. Because why would you be upset with rappers and actors and influencers using their influence to get people out to vote? Because yeah. it didn't benefit her. Ah. Mm. That's it. She had her own celebrities. It was about four. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> she had about four and a half <laughs> celebrities. Like, okay, cool. But, I mean, let, let, another thing. She served on city council for 25 years. How many people endorsed her that she worked with? Zero. Mm. Wait, not one? No. Mm. When none of your co-workers co-sign you, like the people that you work with every day, wow. Andre had like six. Mm-hmm. Andre had six city council members. Every every living former mayor of Atlanta except one endorsed him. Nobody endorsed her. On the phone right now to further discuss this is the other person that she is claiming hurt her chances to win, and that is T.I. Good morning, Tip. What's going on, bro? Well, what's going on? Top of the top to you. Good morning. Man, I am glad you called, bro. We appreciate you. You've, you've now kind of heard what's going on, what the allegations were. What's your reaction, man? Man... That's old news. I'm focused on how to how to how to move forward with, with the mayor we have, mm-hmm. not the one that lost. Congratulations to Andre Dickens also. You know, he ran a solid race. And I don't have anything negative really to say about Miss Felicia Moore. I think she's focusing on the wrong things because it is absolutely factual that she is the only one that voted to shut down studios or, you know, or make it harder for people to operate studios and working against the creatives in a city that was built by the creatives. It's just, I mean, it's suicide to a to a, a person running for mayor. Not to mention, you voted against Tyler Perry Studios, against uh, Sidewalk for Southwest Atlanta. And I think that it's just clear to see that she is a she she she's a constituent of Buckhead and the North Side and don't really con- ain't, ain't concerning herself with the needs of the South Side. I think that is why she lost the race and her base didn't come out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Andre Dickens had twenty seven thousand new voters that came out for him and her base didn't show up to support her because she flip flopped with the written house mm-hmm. verdict. She put up she put up a post saying that she didn't feel the justice was served and most of her far right wing conservative 
uh, supporters, they said, oh, we didn't know you were like this. We thought you were different. We can't mm-hmm. believe you. You lost my vote. She took it down. And then the black people that she was trying to get on her side say, oh, so you didn't really mean this. You just let them. Uh, so now she got caught in a bit of a, you know, a conundrum, if you will. Right. A kerfuffle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm using that one, Tip. Yes. I'm just telling you right now, I'm taking that word. Hey, man. And so, I, and, and, and to be honest with you, like, I think a lot of these things are the reasons why. You know, and we have her own video saying, shut the businesses down. Mm. You dig what I'm saying? So I don't really want to, I don't, and and another thing, when people lied on me earlier this year on her behalf, Mm. I didn't run run the TMZ and yell her name. Man, I took mine like it, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and held it mine because I know every storm runs out of rain. Come on now. So I ain't really, I'm not really tripping off of it. I really hope that she finds a position that she's best, better suited for. But running the city of Atlanta without the culture uh, in high held in high regard, she's not fit for that office. All right, so no. you guys just saw what the fellas had to say about the entire situation. So basically, they're not here for it. You know, they don't appreciate Felicia Moore blaming them for her loss. Like I said, at the end of the day, yes, T.I. is popular. Yes, Isaac Hayes is popular, but let's keep it real. At the end of the day, people are going to vote for who they want to vote for. And I don't care how popular a rapper is. At the end of the day, you have to think about your own best interest. And for most people in Atlanta, from what I'm hearing, their best interest was Andre. Well, with that being said, I decided to mosey on over to Sabrina's page. I'm like, okay, well, what does Sabrina think of this? Because we all know Felicia Moore is her homegirl, okay? That is her ace boom coom. So I went over to her page, and basically she just was like, uh, whoever voted for Andre is a bitch. <laughs> Yeah, that's what she wrote, honey. She said, whoever voted for Andre is a bitch. <laughs> and, you know, to that, all I have to say is bye, Felicia. Okay? <laughs> Your homegirl lost. Get over it. Like I said, hopefully Felicia Moore will be able to find something else in politics that she can get into or try again in a few years. You know what I'm saying? You never know. But I think to just solely blame these two is silly. Um, You have to also blame the fact that your peoples did not come out. They didn't vote for you. They didn't come out in droves. And it seems like her base didn't really trust her either. She was very wishy-washy, so that doesn't help. Even if she had the power to do that, to shut down the strip clubs, don't you understand that the whole appeal of Atlanta is based on Magic City. Like, come on, ma'am. You can't can't fuck with the strip clubs. The strip club feeds the strippers. It feeds the, the fry cook. It, it feeds the dope boys. You know what I'm saying? Like, that is the heart of Atlanta is the strip clubs. A lot of people's music in Atlanta broke in the strip clubs. So for her, for that rumor to even be out there, that's going to leave a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths in Atlanta, honey. You can't fool with them strip clubs, okay? From Magic City to King of Diamonds, you better find something else to protest. It won't be them damn strip clubs, honey. Um, they also said she was trying to shut down music studios. But if that was true, that'd be silly. As we know, Atlanta is a home of many, many musicians. A lot of musicians, not just rappers, but singers, entertainers, things like that. It's a city that's rich in culture, so you can't mess with the arts. That's going to leave a bad taste in people's mouths. So, like I said, good luck to Felicia, but unfortunately, it's by Felicia. And welcome, Andre, okay? So, Andre is the new mayor of Atlanta. Kudos to him. He won fair and square, so it is what it is. So, now moving on to other news. If you guys do not know, Mr. Jesse, you know, Jesse Smoulet, he's back in the news Okay, his trial has started. Very interesting. He's going on trial the same time as Ghislaine Maxwell. But she deserves her own video. We're not even going to talk about Ghislaine today. But I'm paying very close attention to her trial as well. She's spilling all types of (laughs) fucking elite tea. And I'm here for it. But now back to Jesse Smollett or Smollett, whatever the hell you want to call him. (laughs) Um, Basically, it's come out, honey, that he basically did a whole dry run with the Osendario brothers. The two Nigerian brothers. Um... You know, they were initially the MAGA people who attacked them. Ended up being two Nigerian brothers, you know, a far cry from, you know, the white MAGA man that he claimed 
attacked him way back during that cold ass winter in Chicago. But basically now it's coming out during trial and the brothers are saying that um, Jesse recruited them. He helped to stage the attack. They did a dry run. He told them, you know, don't don't rough me up too bad. Don't punch me too bad because, you know, I got to face that. You know, my mama loves and I can't be walking around here with a black eye forever because I got to be on the set of Empire in a few days. So he wanted them to rough him up just enough, just enough to where, you know, look like he got roughed up but not bloody and bleeding where he needs to you know where he's on his deathbed he didn't want to get roughed up like that so a lot of this stuff is coming out and it's making jesse smoulet uh, he just i don't he just seems like a narcissistic sociopath or something not calling him a killer but the fact that this has gone so far is just crazy and it's like none of this was called for none of this was needed but y'all, go ahead and watch the news clip. Billboard put this together. Check this out. Brett and Erica, yeah, rush to judgment. That was Jesse Smollett's uh, attorneys. Uh, that was their defense yesterday, that this whole case was a rush to judgment. The lead detective said this case was anything but. He said it was good police work. He walked the jury through the evidence of this case step by step from start to finish from when Jesse Smollett was a victim to the time he was a suspect. Detective Michael Thies, the lead detective on the Jussie Smollett case, says about 25 Chicago police officers spent more than 3,000 hours and collected 1,500 hours of surveillance video to help solve the vicious hate crime actor Jussie Smollett reported January 29, 2019, making it clear that Smollett was the victim at first. Detective Thies told the jury, this was horrible. The crime was a hate crime. There was a noose. There was bleach. The mayor on down, everybody wanted answers. They wanted to know what happened. Police were looking for the men in this grainy video as the possible suspects, but detectives didn't know who they were. Then, a major break in the case. Was it Grandma Illinois? Brothers Abel and Ola Osandaro were identified from this rideshare video they took the night of the attack. I'm pissed off. Smollett went on national TV and said he was positive the men in the surveillance video were his attackers. Detectives thought they solved the case. I don't have any doubt in my mind that that's them. So what's going on here? Be in custody, so. Once in custody, the brothers told investigators it was all a hoax. Police then spent days trying to determine if the brother's story added up. He said, at the end of the investigation, we determined the alleged hate crime was actually a staged event and the hate crime did not occur. From the rope the brothers purchased at the Crafty Beaver, a hardware store near their family home, to the red hats and ski masks purchased with the $100 bill Smollett allegedly gave them to buy the supplies, to video of Smollett's car supposedly doing a dry run of the attack, Detective Thies says the evidence showed that Smollett orchestrated the attack. Smollett faces six disorderly conduct charges for staging and reporting a fake hate crime. His brother Jojo read a brief statement in support of his brother before court Tuesday. I just want to express that it has been incredibly painful as his family to watch someone you love be accused of something they did not do. And during cross-examination, Jesse Smollett's attorneys, they brought up some um, what they considered homophobic social media from one of the brothers. Uh, they did ask that lead detective. The lead detective has been on the stand for much of the day. Uh, Judge Lynn expects court again to go till about 7 o'clock tonight. Again. And high fives tonight as the star witnesses in the Jesse Smollett case leave the courtroom. The prosecution rested. The defense called its first witness. Our Charlie DeMar spent the entire day inside the courtroom where it got pretty intense at times. And we are outside the courtroom tonight. After four days of deliberations, seven witnesses, the prosecution has rested. The jury will get the day off tomorrow. They're expected to get this case to begin deliberations Monday or Tuesday at the latest. Tonight, it was all hugs for Abel and Ola Osindaro after detailing for the jury what they call an elaborate hoax orchestrated by Jussie Smollett testifying that they were paid to go along with it. The defense's first witness, Smollett's music manager, Brandon Moore, he told the jury that he was on the phone with the actor during the reported attack and that he heard racial and homophobic slurs yelled. He told the jury, I proceeded to hear the phone drop and stuff. It started to sound kind of intense. Smollett got back on the phone and said, I just got jumped. Smollett reported that his attackers punched him, put a rope around his neck and doused him in bleach. The doctor who treated him the night of the reported attack was asked on the stand if the injuries Smollett had were real. 
Dr. Robert Torelli said yes and that he ordered x-rays, which came back negative. And like a scene on Empire, drama inside Judge James Lynn's courtroom. Tamara Walker, one of Smollett's attorneys, called for a mistrial, accusing the judge of referring to the heart of their defense as collateral. Then Walker broke down in tears, claiming the judge physically lunged at her. And Judge Lynn denied that motion and also denied those accusations. The jury also heard from Smollett's publicist, who said that Smollett didn't like being in the spotlight, trying to cast doubt on the theory that Smollett orchestrated the attack. Reporting from the Layton Criminal Courthouse, Charlie DeMar, CBS 2. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So like I said, this whole situation is insane. And I remember when this first broke, like I said, initially when it hit the news, I felt bad. You know, I'm like, this is horrible. You've never heard of Jussie being involved in any bullshit. You know, he seemed to be a really nice guy, very handsome. I loved him in Empire. I was a big fan of the show. And then as more details came out, I'm like, this story is bullshit. Like, because I remember that was like one of the coldest winters. It was like negative 22 degrees in Minnesota. In Chicago, it was like negative 23. Like, we basically had the same type of weather. And I'm like, who the hell goes out at 10 o'clock at night in negative 22 degree weather to go get a Subway sandwich and walking when you could just call Uber Eats or, you know what I'm saying, or order a pizza. So after a while for me, his story started crumbling. And it was funny because as I was questioning it and I'm like, I don't buy this. This is bullshit. Folks came at me, said I was homophobic. How dare I question his story? How dare I question their narrative? So to me, I'm, I'm laughing at this shit. Because y'all swerping down, he was innocent. Y'all swerping down, he was attacked by some random MAGA person. Yeah, because Chicago just screams MAGA country. Fuck Mississippi, they're all in Chicago. You know, a democratic city. Like, come on now. And then the fat, and then the, the, the little noose that they threw on his neck, the bleach that they threw on. I mean, the, the, you can't make this up. And then let's not forget that, that fucking Scooby Doo letter that he sent them. <laughs> where he cut out the newspaper clippings with different size letters and shit and pasted it. And that was his hate crime letter. Um, and then they had the little man on the noose, you know, the little stick figure. Jesse, I don't know if he starved for attention, but this was such a waste. It was so he literally ruined his reputation. Because like I said before this, nobody had anything bad to say about Jesse. You know what I'm saying? Everybody liked him. He was very handsome. You know, he came from a good family. So I just don't get the point of this. And what's even crazier when I look back on it were the two main people who had his back, who were going hard for Jesse, um, was our vice president, Kamala Harris. You know, she's always missing in action. But when Jesse was going through his shit, oh, she was right there by his side. But now that the country's going through our shit, we can't find her. Joe Biden don't want to answer no questions. He just walks off during these press conferences, child. And it's about to where Kamala is because I ain't seen her in a while. You know, so I just find it very interesting that I, like I said, years ago when all this came out, I feel like this is deeper. I feel like this is bigger than him just looking for attention and being a weirdo, you know, attention seeking narcissistic sociopath. I feel like this is very political. You know what I'm saying? And of all the people who could have attacked him, why did the guy have to be wearing a MAGA hat? You know what I'm saying? And screaming, this is MAGA country. What would be the point of that? That's very political, if you ask me. Why couldn't it just been like a regular, you know, white guy from Chicago? You know, why did it have to be like some country bumpkin MAGA hat wearing person so i just felt like the whole situation is deeper it's political i think that may come out during the trial who knows i just found the whole situation just interesting and it's really sad that he stooped this low i don't know who put him up to this i don't know why he would do this you know attention is a hell of a drug and he got a lot of attention i mean when everybody believed him i remember lee daniels was out remember lee daniels was on the internet crying and shit jossie he's my son He's my son. I mean, he got a lot of attention, honey. I mean, he was out there screaming, talking about he was a gay Tupac. And above all, I fought the fuck back. I'm the gay Tupac. And then it came out. Oh no, yeah, you are the gay Tupac. All eyes on me, July ass. So I don't know. This whole situation's messy. I don't know how it's going to end. I mean, is he going to get 20 years? I doubt that. It's not that serious. But um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do with him. They're going to throw him in jail for a year, you know, just, just give him probation. Who knows? So, yeah, he should see his day in court, you know. But I feel like there's more people behind this. I feel like um, he did this for a reason, and he did this to kind of sway the um, 
you know, the, the upcoming elections that were going to happen soon enough, you know, to keep that bad image out there and stroke racial divide and all types of mess. And I think he was a perfect puppet um, just because he was so beloved. So nobody really questioned it. But then as more information came out and people were kind of like, mm, this shit ain't adding up. Just because you question something and you're saying, well, one plus one is not equaling two does not make you homophobic for having common sense and seeing through the bullshit. So, well, now everybody has no choice but to see through the bullshit. He's a liar. He staged this, and, you know, so he'll probably get probation, pay another fine and, and call it a damn day. But his reputation is basically shot. I don't see anybody in the industry working with him. He's lost a lot from this mess. Um, this helped to end Empire, which was a really good show, but it didn't help. The whole thing just left a bad taste in everybody's mouths. So that is what's going on in the news as far as, like, you know, politics and crime and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know what you guys think about everything. How do you guys feel about the whole Felicia Moore um, the mayoral candidate who lost and who's now blaming Isaac Hayes the third and T.I. for her loss. How do you guys feel about that? Do you feel like they played a part in her losing or do you feel like that's on her and by Felicia? And then how do you guys feel about the whole Jussie Smollett situation? You know, he's in trial, he's at court, and a lot of things are coming out and it just doesn't look good at all. So let me know your thoughts on both stories and I will talk to you guys later. Have a good evening. Deuces.